Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be giving my All Australian team halfway through the year, my All Australian team so far now. Obviously there's not a 23 round season, it's only uh, 17 at this stage and I guess nine sort of halfway through 17. Obviously uh, Monday night's game saw the end to round nine. So I thought, look, before this season gets too crazy, I'll give my All Australian team thus far. So, without any further ado, we'll start with the full back line, and I've got Jacob Wietering uh, from the Carlton Football Club. It's been his breakout season, in my opinion. I saw a stat before where he has only conceded 10 disposals once, and that's amazing. You know, he doesn't let his opponents touch the ball. I think Westhoff had three disposals, and Shaq, he had two when he played on them. And it's really awesome to see. He doesn't concede any goals either. I think the most goals he's conceded in, in a game is two. And that was on Max King against St Kilda. But it's just fantastic. You know, there was a lot of, I guess, there was a lot of speculation about whether he should have been taken pick one. And he got injured a bit and then he wasn't really doing his job. They moved him up forward. He didn't do anything up there either. There was a lot of uh, contradiction and, and there was a lot of, I guess, conspiracies that he shouldn't have been taken at one and he shouldn't be in the team. But I think he's making those naysayers pay now and it's really, really good to see. Joining him in the fullback position is Nick Haynes from the Giants. And he is just, where's he been? He just is a, marks everything, hands of steel. I think he averages eight a game, which is fantastic. Gets the ball. He averages 17 disposals. That's nearly another mid as well as the fact that he's tall and he's agile. I think that he's a very, very, he's the rock of the Giants' defense, and that's amazing. So I think that, yeah, he's a he's a certain starter in this team. Uh, he just gets everything. He's not afraid to leave his man to go and affect a contest, making sure that he either halves it or wins it. So, I mean, he's got a lot of courage on the ground. He's a very good pressure player as well. Always pressures the person with the ball, whether he's on the mark or in the air. Doesn't lose many contests. So, yeah, he's a certain starter in this team as well. In the second back pocket, I guess the right back pocket position, Jordan Ridley from the Bombers. Surprise addition, yes. Second year, yes. Does he deserve it? Yes. He looks as solid as anything. I didn't know anything about him until I saw him against Collingwood and I thought, Jesus, this bloke can play. Second year, I think he's only played like 15 games or something and he looks as solid as ever. He looks like a 100 game player. He knows how to take a mark. He knows what to do with the ball. He's similar to Nick Haynes in the fact that he just marks everything and uh, he's just got some really good pressure acts. Almost again like another midfielder. He can just he can play on anybody. Could play on Brody Grundy if he had to, if he drifted up four, but he could also play on Jamie Allard. He's just one of those freak mid-sized defenders that's also stupidly tall, but also can play as a small defender. It's uh yeah, he's going to he's gonna be a mainstay in that Bombers back line for a long time if he can keep this sort of form up. And yeah, he starts in my All-Australian team so far. Moving on to the half-back line now, we have got Braden Maynard from Collingwood. I didn't actually know how good he was, but I think in Howe's absence, he looks just unbelievable. Somehow finds the ball everywhere, can negotiate his way through traffic like there's no tomorrow. Really, really good with the ball, always hits a target. And yeah, again, I didn't know how good he was. I always thought that he was sorta, of, I thought he was a bit of a whinger to be honest after that grand final where he thought he got blocked and he didn't get blocked and yada, yada, yada. But yeah, it's his, his breakout year as well, which is really good for the Magpies. Just fantastic in defense, always gets back with a spoil, sorta of brings back the defensive game of old. Yeah, you know, he doesn't try and mark everything. If, if there's a ball to be punched, he'll, he'll send it into the third row, so. Yeah, he's a really, really good player and belongs in this team. Probably unlucky uh, that he hasn't had that spotlight before. I guess Howe's been there. They've had a pretty rock-solid back line, but now he's sort of the main man. He's definitely stepping up to the task. In the centre-half back position, I've got Sam Doherty, the co-captain of the Blues. It was his 100th game on the weekend. So good on him. Well done. It's amazing to think that he's doing the things he's doing and has only played 100 games. So he's got a big, long career ahead of him. And with Paddy Cripps and Sam Walsh and everybody else at that team, it's going to be pretty good looking in a few years. Almost a seventh mid. He just finds a way. He just does not stop running. A bit like uh, Ridley and Maynard in the fact that he isn't supposedly tall, but he's not short either. He can take a mark, uh, just finds the ball, hits a target, 
pushes up the ground, which you like to see, and he does back himself when he's running. So that's really, really good. As I said, he's only young, future of the club with Weedering. They're going to have a scary defensive outfit when both of those boys get a bit more game time into them. And, uh, yeah, good, good on the Blues boys. He's obviously had a few down weeks in a row. Didn't play too well against the Dogs and the uh, he played a ripper against the Dons. Didn't play too well last weekend either, but you take his good games over his bad games 110% of the time, and he's really exciting to watch. I love watching him, and I also love watching the Blues, and I think that he and Weedering are doing so much well because there's a lot of confidence within that group now. The Blues are winning. You know, they're not getting outscored every game. They've got a positive record. They're going to be something to watch out for. I think they're, what, 4-4? Four and four? I'll, I'll count that as positive. Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely not negative, that's for sure. They're going to be exciting to watch. Rounding out the back six is Jake Lloyd for the Sydney Swans. He's just so good. He had 36, uh, 34 disposals on the weekend. That is amazing for a midfielder. He is a midfielder, but he's also a defender. That's why I, I recognise him as a defender more than I do a midfielder. He's just fantastic. He's been the shining light there for a couple of years. He's just started to grow into the role. I think now the Swans are starting to lose a few more games and there's no Buddy Franklin, there's no Isaac Heaney, there's no Josh Kennedy. He's started to come up into that role really, really well. I'm not saying he's a game changer, but you definitely know that he's there. Even in a losing effort, I know they won on the weekend, but he's just been in every game and he just wills his team on. It's fantastic. Puts together some really good defensive effort, and he's a really good leader on the ground. So, And he's a, he's a utility as well, something that's not really seen these days. I think the best utility I can sort of remember of the last five years or ten years is Brendan Goddard. You know, you could put him on the half-forward flank, he'd kick a goal for you. You could put him on, on the wing, he'd do his job. You could put him on the half-back flank, and he would make sure that no goals get got through. I think that Lloyd's sort of the same. Uh, put him in the back line, he'll make sure that you don't score a goal on him. Midfield, he just runs. I haven't really seen him on the uh, the half forward flank yet, but I think he could do that job as well. It just really depends who he's on. But I think he could fit in any team as well, which is something that a lot of defenders couldn't really do. I think that midfielders, you could say, oh, Dustin Mart could fit it. Gold Coast and Kilda, North Melbourne, he could fit anywhere. But defenders, you can't really... I couldn't really see Jacob Weedering fitting in at St Kilda, but I could see Jake Lloyd. So... Yeah, he's just a one-of-a-kind player, and you'll love to see people like that succeed. On to the midfield now, and we've got Jack McRae. He's been huge, and that midfield is stacked. Bontem Pally, Dunkley, I know he's out. Hunter, I know he's out. Uh, who else have we got? Bontem, I said Bontem Pally. And then McRae as well. Like, that's a huge midfield, and he still manages to be the best in it. Looks a class above, which is just amazing, you know, with a midfield. Like, Bontem Pally's had a bit of a if he sees any, he hasn't really performed to what he should or what we all thought he would. But McRae's just always been there. He averages 24 disposals at 75% efficiency, so he hits a target. You know, he's just one of those players that when it's in his hands, you know it's going to go well. And uh, yeah, he earns his spot. Did he get in last year? I'm not too sure, but I think if he can continue his form and the doggies can keep pushing up the ladder, they're going to be a very exciting prospect come finals. But they've got to keep winning. And he's going to need to stand up in the midfield now that uh, two of their best are out. My next midfielder, I guess the centre position, is Jack Steele, a uh, tagging machine. Hurts the opposition midfield and can get his own ball. I think when he played, well, when St Kilda played Carlton, he got 24 disposals and Cripps got 23, although he did go down forward. But to half time, he kept Cripps to. What did he keep him to? Five at half time, and I think Steele had something like 13 or 14. So he can get his own ball whilst shutting you down. He did the same to uh, Brad Crouch against the Crows. I think he got like 29, and Crouch got 12. So usually a tagger uh, of old would shut both of you down. He'd shut Brad Crouch down, but Steele would only also get probably 15 disposals. To, to completely double that stat, and halve what Brad Crouch can get. It's, a, it's an effort to him. I think he's the future leader of St Kilda. Uh, I, I love Geary as a captain. I think that he's a, a courageous beast and he just wants, he's just such a loyal team member, but what Rewalt had with him was a presence and Geary doesn't quite have that, but somebody that does have that presence at St Kilda is Jack Steele and I think he's the future. And if he can build players like Hunter Clark and Nick Caulfield and Zach Jones, Brad Hill, they can all go with him. St Kilda will be a very exciting prospect. Maybe not this year, but in coming years. 
my next winger and the last person in the midfield before we get to the followers is Took Miller. I love Took Miller. Uh, he's stupidly loyal to Gold Coast. I think anybody else in his position with his skill set would have gone. They have gone. Tom Lynch, Dion Prestia, Jaeger O'Meara, Stephen May. They all went. He stayed, and I respect that. Stupidly loyal, deserves all he's getting at the moment, and now he's got a team around him that's willing to play and willing to win, you can see how good he is. He's been building for a while. He's always sort of been there, but because the Suns have been so lacklustre, we go, oh, who played well? Oh, no, it was just the Suns. But now they've got uh, Brandon Ellis and Hugh Greenwood, who we'll get to. They're looking pretty good, and that midfield's looking pretty solid. If you inject Raoul into there and you're kicking it down to people like Rankin and stuff, if they lose two-meter Peter, they're going to be down a tall forward, but... I think that, yeah, they just need to keep looking at him and hopefully that they don't lose Ben King for their sake. But they've got a list they can build around and Took Miller is the future. He's the past, the present and the future of that club. It's amazing. Into the forward line now, we start with Dan Butler. Steal of the trade period, for sure. Uh, what he's done at St Kilda as opposed to what he was doing at Richmond is it's a different person. I think that that mainly comes down to opportunity. He wasn't really getting an opportunity at Richmond. Although he was a premiership player, he wasn't doing much. Whereas at St Kilda, he's their best player at the moment, probably winning their best and fairest. I think Jack Steele would have an argument there as well. But he's looking really, really good. Finds the ball. Probably the best front and centre player I've ever seen. Just can spoil a pack. Knows where the goals are. For a small forward, can kick a goal from a set shot as well. Usually small forwards don't. They uh, prefer to crumb and, and run them in, but Dan Butler can kick them on the run. He can kick them from the pocket. He can kick them from a set shot as well. So that's really awesome to see. He's a pressure machine. He's got a lot of pace, but he just does not stop running. He can push up the ground and affect a contest on the wing. Comes out to uh, Jake Carlisle, goes back down the wing. Dan Butler's there at the half forward flank to go and get it and run it through. So he's just a pressure machine, a gut running machine. Stupidly underrated in the competition, and uh, Richmond are definitely paying for that one. In my centre-half forward position, I've got Tom Hawkins. Bit of a surprise, but I think he belongs there. I think he's sort of turning into what Nick Rewalt was towards the end of his career. Nowhere near in terms of stature. Nick Rewalt was obviously a legend. Tom Hawkins on the way up to there, just below him. But he's just doing what Tom Hawkins should be doing, sort of living out the, uh, the rest of his career. Pushing up the ground now, I think he's averaging something like 13 disposals. So for somebody like him, who used to average like six, that's a big step up. Latter stages of his career, I think that that's really, really important. He's no longer the main man. I think that's sort of Asava Radigalia, Reece Stanley. He's got tools to support him now. So he always finds himself one out and he's still stupidly dangerous. So yeah, I'm liking what Tom Hawkins is doing at the moment and that's why he belongs in my team. The last member on my uh, half forward flank is Toby Green. Uh, he's an X Factor, enough said really, it's Toby Green. Can turn a game on its head, he did it on the weekend. Richmond were coming and coming and coming. Just give it to Toby Green, he'll kick two goals and he'll put you away. So he's just got that X Factor and I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. He's got a bit of a tip rat about him. Just knows where the ball is, knows how to get it. Although he's the main man and opposition look for him, he still just does so much. Richmond don't have a bad back line, but he was still able to kick five and win the game for them. He's good at his job, and that's what you want in a small forward. Into the full forward line, we've got Tom Papley, X Factor, turns the game on its head, has an elite energy. He's just so infectious. When he jumped over Will Hayward's head, it was awesome. When he ran in that goal and didn't hand it to uh, Elijah Taylor, wasn't awesome, but he did what he had to do. Uh, he's just got that infectious nature about him, and Carlton are going to love him when they get him. They need it. They need a little bit of a... They just need a presence down there, the Blues. And I think that the Swans, minus Buddy Franklin, they haven't lost that, that much. Buddy, Buddy Franklin's obviously... I rate him over him because he's tall. But Tom Papley, he's just... He's just got a little bit about him that just makes you worry. Every time he's near the ball, something's going to happen. A bit like Glenn Maxwell in the Australian team. And he's got that win at all cost mentality, you know, against the Suns where they ended up going down by five goals. Whenever they're down, he makes sure to get around his teammates. They kick a goal that brings them back within a couple of goals. He's the first one there. He brings the team up and uh, he's, a, he's just a good good player. A bit selfish, but he has the team. He has, he's got good in, good intentions, which uh, it, I guess that, that uh, cancels all of his selfishness out, doesn't it? Going into the full forward position, Charlie Dixon. Best key forward in the competition, bar none. 
He's bringing back that scare factor in that position, that tall four position. We haven't had a scare factor like Charlie Dixon for a long time because you know whenever he's going to get near it, he's going to take that mark. Dougal Howard did a fantastic job the other night. I think kept him to eight disposals and a goal. But that's all you need. He is, he is beatable, but so is every key forward. Against the Blues, he kicked three goals, four, and won the game off his own boot. If he converts that to five goals, two, we don't even talk about that as a close game. We talk about that as a Charlie Dixon masterclass. As I said, we haven't had a scare factor in a while in a key forward, and he's slowly bringing that back. I think he's dropped a fair bit of weight too, which makes him even more intimidating because he's now more agile, and that's not good for any defense in the competition. And what I also love about him is that he sacrifices himself. Opposition defenses know how good he is, so instead of sending it up as a one-on-one, -on -one, Charlie marks for it, bang, bang, two defenders spoil the contest, goes down to Robbie Gray, into Pow Pepper goal. He sacrifices himself and draws the opposition defense in so well that they score. So Charlie Dixon, although he can win a game off his boot, his assists, or his almost goals, they're just as important. And I think that, yeah, he's a very... As much as people love him for his goal kicking, his football IQ is also quite high. So good old Charlie, good on him. Into the next forward pocket position. We have got Charlie Cameron. Uh, got that X factor about him. Lifts the team. He's the main man. Takes away from Eric Hipwood somehow, and that's amazing. He's got stupidly good goal sense. Nobody can touch him, and it's amazing to think how well He's done at Brisbane as opposed to Adelaide. He's gone to another level and we never thought that he could do that, but he has, and uh, he's very, very exciting to watch. I love watching him. Rev it up, Charlie. Hope that he, you know, and it's awesome. It's, I'm glad to see that, yeah, key forwards aren't the reason why teams are kicking good scores. It's because of the whole forward line unit, led by Charlie Cameron, and that's why Brisbane are doing so well at the moment. In to the followers now, Brody Grundy, enough said, best ruckman in the competition. Lockie Neal, enough said, no. Nah. Brownlow Fancy, uh, just he's just got that X factor, doesn't he? Not uh, like he's not explosive like Cameron or Green or whatever, but he just does his job every single week. It's amazing to think if Fremantle had held onto him, how much better he would have gotten. Maybe he didn't. Maybe it was because Fife was the main man. Fife and Mundy in that tag team. Neil was sort of like the the guy on the out. But it's amazing to think how well he's done at Brisbane. And it's scary to think that if they play finals footy, he'll really come good at the right time, how scary he's going to be. He's been a bit down as of late, but man, when he's on, he's on. Right, in the third and final followers position, final spot on the ground, it's Hugh Greenwood. Uh, where'd he come from? He was a fringe member at Adelaide, in and out of the squad, went to Gold Coast for some opportunity, and he's become their most valuable player. He just runs his guts out. Maybe he does too much. Maybe there's too much expectation on him, but I think he likes that. You always see him run off and he looks spent. You know, he leaves it all on the ground and that's what you want. He's got a good team around him that he can build around. He's only young himself. And I think that if he and Miller and Alice can stay together, geez, and Ben King and, and all their people like Charlie Ball, if their back line can develop and their forward line can develop, the midfield's just got to do its own thing and they will be a very, very, very challenging team in years to come. Onto the bench now, and we've got Max Gorn. Uh, he's just exploded at the moment. He's sort of come from nowhere. He was looking a bit down and out at the start of the year. The Ds weren't playing too well, but now they're winning games, he's looking a lot better. Uh, you know, I think that it's important to have two Ruckman in your All-Australian team because when it comes to Grundy and Gorn, you can't really separate them. So either of them could start on the park. I'm easy with that. Stephen Canelio is another member on the bench. He's been a bit down, but when he's on, he's on. When he is on GWS lift, as we saw on uh, Thursday, Friday night, so... There's pluses for him. Uh, he's been down, but he's still influential, and he's Mr. Reliable. If you need something done, there's Cornelio. If you need him to go down back and take an important mark late, there's Stephen Cornelio. You need him to run the midfield, Stephen Cornelio. You need him to kick a goal at an important stage, Stephen Cornelio. Mr. Reliable belongs in this team. Uh, he's just going to be a force to be reckoned with if he can get a good run at it. So good old Cogs, good old JWS. On to the next member of the bench. Is Jai Simpkin. He's a bit of a smoky in this team. I think he's coming of age. He's stupidly young. 
Had a bit of an injury concern over the last two weeks, so hasn't been playing too well, but he still keeps his spot in this side, in my opinion. Fantastic prospect, and he will be awesome. Any club could have him, but I'm glad the Roos do because it's just an opportunity for him to grow. I feel like he'd sort of get lost at a club higher up the ladder, but I think, yeah, if he develops, and with Zeebel out, he develops, becomes the main man, they're going to have a, a real, real, real interesting midfielder, a real dangerous midfielder on their hands in the next coming years. Last member of my team and last member on the bench is Travis Boak. He's a fine wine, coming of age, didn't play too well on the weekend, but Port really need him, probably more than ever now, uh, and he's delivering. So Travis Boak belongs on this team, and uh, yeah, I'm glad to have him on it. On to some honourable mentions now, and there are a few. I'm not really going to uh, give some descriptions, but these are due to sort of injury. Maybe they're just a couple of games away from being in this team, or maybe they're just not there yet, but they could be. Uh, we've got Matt Rowe and Jake Stringer. Both for different reasons, well, the same reason, they're both injured, but if they'd continued fit, I think they'd both be in this team. Uh, they were both playing really, really well up until their injuries. Uh, both had that X factor. Rao was just couldn't touch him, and Jake Stringer has that sort of X factor. It turns the game on its head. People go to him, people look for him, and he just stands up when he needs to. Uh, we've got Callum Wilkie here, very much, very much a smoky, but doesn't really make any mistakes. So I think that, yeah... He's up there with Weedering. I could have put either of them. I think I didn't because of my St Kilda bias. But I think that if he keeps playing the year he's playing, he could be in that team for sure. I've got Sean Higgins and Scott Pendlebury. They're both playing really, really good footy. Uh, Pendles obviously missed last week due, due to a bit of tightness. But yeah, they, they could both be in this team by the year's end. Uh, that is my all-Australian team so far, though. So let me know what you think of it in the comments section down below. Let me know who's in your team. Let me know who you take out or bring in. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Enjoy the footy because it's going to be madness in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheerio. Sayonara and goodbye.